So Daniel Wagner wrote an article about this earlier yesterday, and I thought it was a great idea to go out there and debate. Because when it comes to this player, this is a guy that Vancouver Canucks fans were kind of salivating over at different points throughout this previously completed season. You already know from the title and the thumbnail, today we are heading over to the Carolina Hurricanes because the guy that they ultimately ended up making a huge trade for in one, Jake Gensel, is available on the trade market once again. But not necessarily in the same capacity that he was available on the trade market in 2024's trade deadline period. Jake Ensel, of course, is the top of the crop Pittsburgh Penguins free agent to be that had 52 points in 50 games played with the Pens. He is coming off of a 73 point season last year, an 84 point season the year before that. He has always been consistent and Realistically, when you're talking about some of the best Penguins in the late 2010s, the best Penguins as they won multiple Stanley Cups, Jake Gensel's name is near the top of that list. He has been so good, so competent, and for a guy who is only 29 years old, whose contract is expiring, of course, everybody recognizes he's going to get a huge payday for the 24-25 season and beyond. The question is, though, which team is going to be the one to give him that? Gensel finished off this previous season with Carolina scoring 25 points in 17 games in the regular season and 9 points in 11 playoff games. He was consistent as all hell, still going out there and doing his thing. He was an assist-a-game guy in the regular season with Carolina, but now, because the Hurricanes are holding on to this asset and because they are in a position where they're pretty much going to lose him for nothing unless they decide to re-sign him themselves, They've officially put this asset back on the block, but it's not in the same way as he was on the block before. You see, Carolina paid an arm and a leg to get Gensel, they traded a bunch of prospects, they traded Michael Bunting, and the Penguins are looking pretty good after because they didn't really have too many prospects themselves, so nice of the Hurricanes to help them bolster up their prospect pool. But nowadays, if you wanted to take a look at the Gensel trade price, this is what is labeled out right here. It's a mid-round pick. Nothing too special. Nothing significant, but it is noteworthy enough that it does worth bearing repeating. Friedman talked about this on 32 Thoughts Podcast. That seems to be the available price here. Carolina has let everybody know that if you want to trade for his rights for a chance to sign him, that is possible for a mid-round pick. Now, before we dive into the Canucks, because Daniel Wagner did write a big piece about this, I will say it's easy for people to look at the idea of trading for Gensel and say, okay, no, why would you do that? That's the stupidest thing in the world. Why would you trade an asset for something that you can get for free if you just wait a few weeks? And that's a very good question. It's a good train of thought. You want to maximize what you have and minimize what you give away. But if Jake Gensel goes to the free agent market, there is no telling how much money he's going to be able to get and which teams are going to be bidding with you for the right to sign this guy. If you get him right now, you're the only team that can negotiate with him from now until July 1st. And if you're really adamant on getting it done, then you could say, hey, okay, what's the number? What do you want? We'll give you whatever it is that you need because we don't want to compete with all these other teams that are going to be tossing money and chump change at you trying to get you to sign with their team for an extra million or $2 million a year. We'll get first dibs on you, sign you to a number you're good with, and we won't even have to worry about getting out bid or something by some other random team on July 1st. Now, of course, there is a little bit of a backfiring situation with that, because what if you trade an asset for a guy that becomes a free agent and you don't end up signing him? The one that comes to my mind is actually a Carolina Hurricanes example in Adam Fox, who did not want to sign anywhere but New York, even though these other teams like Calgary and Carolina tried to entice him to sign with them. Could you imagine the Hurricanes with Adam Fox and their team? That's crazy. So, when it comes to the Vancouver Canucks, this is why Daniel Wagner wrote this piece yesterday, should the Vancouver Canucks trade for Jake Gensel's rights? He talks in the beginning of this piece about the forward lines. This is a comment made by Rick Tockett. Could I have done something different? Should we have skated maybe one of those days that we didn't? You have to be careful. I find myself playing the what-if game. I've tried to watch the last few games, not the what-if game, and just trying to enjoy the game. It's hard. 
This, of course, is illustrating the depth as to the Vancouver Canucks' sadness in terms of their defeat in the second round. There also was some conversations of regret. Patrick Galvin said that it wasn't Ilya Mikheyev's fault that he was a top six guy. It was my fault. My job is to put players in a position where they belong for them to be successful. Now, no, unfortunately, Patrick Alvin, that's not your responsibility. That's the coach's responsibility to put a player who is already on the team in a position where they belong for them to be successful. But I get what Alvin is saying here. They didn't make enough trades or they didn't acquire enough good wingers to fill out the top six. Thus, you had Ilya Mikheyev being forced to play in that role when he really is not good enough to do that. So... With this in mind, Wagner writes that adding a bona fide top six winger this offseason has to be a priority for the Vancouver Canucks. Then he introduces Jake Gensel, talks about how his price is looking like a mid-round pick. The Canucks were looking to trade for Gensel at the trade deadline this year, one of the many teams pursuing the winger, but couldn't come up with the assets to get the deal done. Could they acquire him now, though? Wagner then says... Trading for Gensel's rights would give the Canucks two advantages. Firstly, it would give them an exclusive negotiating window, where they would be the only team vying for Gensel's services. Secondly, it would give them the option of signing Gensel for eight years, the maximum contract length for re-signing with your current team, as opposed to seven. Is that worth a mid-round pick, perhaps in the fourth round? It's a risk because there are no guarantees that Gensel would actually sign with the Canucks after this hypothetical trade. But it's not the most painful risk to take either. While the Canucks don't have a lot of picks in the 2024 draft, fourth-round picks seldom become NHL guys. In just the last 30 years, the Canucks have only had two guys drafted in the fourth round play NHL games in Rathbone and Joseph Obate. In the entire Canucks history of the draft, just four fourth-round picks have played more than 200 games, so... Realistically, a fourth-round pick is not going to be the biggest deal in the world. Essentially, when everything's laid out like this, if you wanted to trade away a lottery ticket, like a fourth-round pick normally is, in exchange for maybe an extra few weeks' worth of time to sign Gensel and the opportunity to add an extra year on that contract, do you do it? I will say that Gensel may not be the absolute perfect signing when you consider that he is 29 years old. He'll probably want something in the 7-8 year range, and if you wanted to sign this guy till he's 36 or 37 years old, that's a really tall task, not gonna lie. Like, I get it, Gensel has been awesome, he has been so productive, so good, but how good is he going to be able to be as that contract ages up? I feel like the Vancouver Canucks already sort of did a similar contract with JT Miller, signing him till his mid to late 30s at a pretty big cap hit of 8 million bucks. Now, sure, Miller is a 100-point caliber guy this season, so you can say $8 million is worth it, but is that $8 million going to be worth it in 2026? Is it going to be worth it in 2028? You have to ask the same questions for Gensel even if the idea of trading for the signing rights to him and getting that extra year and being able to have your own negotiating window sounds appealing. You have to be sure. That's the thing. And if Patrick Alvin and Jim Rutherford like their guys so much, because yeah, I remember Gensel was a penguin and Alvin and Rutherford were penguins, not to mention Ian Cole, Casey DeSmith... Uh, Mark Friedman, Teddy Bluger, all these former Penguins heading over to Vancouver. Jake Gensel, could he be the next one? Who really knows? This is certainly an idea where if Alvin and Rutherford think this is the right move, I have more trust and belief in these guys than I've had in Benning at any point during Benning's tenure. Tenure? 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 Oh boy, that's funny. I didn't even realize that. Was it even ten years? No, it was like eight years. My bad. But... Ten years sounded a lot cooler, but when it comes to Alvin and Rutherford, if they feel like this is the right move, okay, all the power to you. I'm not going to complain too much if the Vancouver Canucks add a player who is as good as Jake Gensel when it comes to scoring points. So if you feel the same, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. There's a lot more written about in this article by Wags. He goes over a few different options for top six forwards that could displace the role that Ilya Mikheyev has. They talk about Sam Reinhardt, etc, etc. So link is going to be in the description if you want to read more about this article yourself. But let me know your thoughts on the idea of the Vancouver Canucks making a trade for Jake Gensel this time around. Not during the 23-24 season before the trade deadline, but now, before free agency. Do you think this is an appropriate move? Would you do this for your Alvin? And what do you think is the appropriate price? Is it just a fourth round pick? Is it a higher pick? If you're a Hurricanes fan, what do you want for Jake Gensel? And were you satisfied with the run that you had with him in the playoffs and the end of the regular season? Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Ash Rolls 99. And bye.